Okay, let's start. I'm going to draw. Uh, this is Robert Patterson uh, using my method for drawing faces. I wanted to see if we can do a quick, quick sketch. He's got quite a long, a long face. So let's say his chin. Do the cranium first. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but that's that's good. So that's going to be about the brow line. like he's got a slightly longer chin than the average so we'll say it's about there chin this isn't going to be perfect to begin with but I can always adjust just as I go that's about the eye line there got a very broad mouth. It's quite narrow. Let's put in the eyeballs. All right, let's try and get shape of the eyes his nose seems to point downwards broad chin but very small wide mouth there, just very short. in there, these cheekbones, they seem to come straight down, that what, that's what gives him a very unique jawline. And it curves like so. Now I don't know what the shape of his cranium's like, but the hairline goes up quite high. I'm 
He's got quite thick eyebrows. So the eyebrows are going to come in about there. Chin's going to be a tricky one to get. It's the angle of the chin I haven't quite got right. And this comes in as well. It's not so pronounced. I've made mine very, very square, but I can adjust as I go. I may have even made his chin a bit too long. Very straight down the side. There's a straightness there, and it just angles in just a bit. Straight, angles in just a fraction. Remove some of these lines later. Okay. And with ears, if they go out, out more. Not so far, but I can adjust that as we go. Chin definitely too long. The hairline, bring it up, then it goes straight up. Again, the same on this side. Almost now that I look at it, it's got a very sort of square. Square face, square head. Now let's try and get the shape of the brow. Thick eyebrows. the nose now. I tend to jump around a lot when I do my drawings. Do bits here, bits there. I don't really finish off one particular area and then move on to the next. It's sort of like constructing different areas and then move on to another area, come back, finish off a little bit. And in the end, for me, it feels like it should all come together eventually. Just to begin with, it looks like a bit of a mess. But I kind of like that because then I'm not bound by a bit. I don't have a particular part where I say, oh, that's perfect. I don't want to miss, I don't want to move that or change that. and try and build everything around it. Because for me, if I, if I do something and it looks perfect, I don't want to touch it again. 
and it took a while for me to get over that and say, oh, no, you know, if, if you've drawn it once, I can draw it again. That's what I had to teach myself, is that, okay, I've drawn something perfect, but it doesn't work in this picture. Instead of trying to rework the entire picture around it, just remove that bit, redo it again. Because if I drew it once, I can draw it again. But sometimes I do a little little piece and oh, it looks so perfect. I don't wanna I don't wanna change that. But sometimes you have to. Sometimes you get a request from if it's yourself, you get You've got your internal monologue going saying, you know that's you know it's it's good, but you need to change it. And sometimes it's a request from the customer. If you're working on a piece for a customer and they say, Oh it's good, but can you change the face? And when it's can you change the expression? And that's happened plenty of times. I've done projects where the customers ask for a change in expression, or they said, oh, it doesn't quite look like the expression we want. It should be. One particular instance, I had a customer say, he looks, the, the main character on the cover looks like he's uh, enjoying the scene too much. It's supposed to be uh, an intense scene can you change it changed it and they said oh now he looks like he's not enjoying he looks too afraid now he should look more heroic and it, it must have changed it about three or four times and then eventually I just resent them the first picture and they said that was perfect so sometimes <laughs> sometimes you're redoing something multiple times because of a request that may not may not be right may not be what you think is best but if the customer is paying you got to make that change and sometimes look you might be right you might be you might be in the right but you've got to make those changes You've got to, maybe you've got to work it in a way that you can prove to the customer that this is this is why I'm doing it this way. I think I think that's one thing that puts a lot of people off going into freelance work. Is because maybe in freelance work you think I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in charge I'm gonna be asked to draw this and it's gonna be perfect but there's a, a lot of requests to change things I tend to look at those moments as challenges and it gives you the opportunity to really push yourself really work yourself in another direction that you wouldn't think you could work because I think learning, relearning things, relearning new techniques, learning new techniques, then relearning new techniques or you know finding solutions to problems in illustration was one of the reasons I got into illustration was the problem solving. How are you going to draw this? How do you, how am I going to do this piece? Okay, I've got a deadline. It's two days and they want this done. I know it takes me three days to do this. How am I going to do this? Sometimes sitting there for half a day thinking about how to get it done and now I'm down to a day and a half. But you get it done because you work out a problem, you work out a, a, a method, 
for doing things that just makes your life easier I mean that's part of illustration as well for me was not to not to laboriously sit over my illustrations for hours and hours and days and days and squirrel away at some little little piece which is partly something I enjoy like I could really narrow it really narrow it down and and work on a, a piece for ages and ages and really get stuck in a zone working on something but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get paid for that that time so I know I have to break myself out of that mold and work faster more efficiently but I, at the same time not to reduce the quality look at this chin I gotta work on this chin this So coming up with solutions, problem solving, I'd say is one of the big big benefits we have as illustrators. Illustrators and artists. I mean we all want to make something that other artists look at and go, oh how did you do that? Or wow, I never thought of that. I think that's one thing as an artist we're all striving to do almost like scientists experimenting trying to find find some new species or some new way of doing something and at the same time we're all learning from each other I think art is a truly unique uh, you, truly unique profession in that sense. It seems to encompass a whole bunch of different things. Like, I guess this is the same in a lot of different things. But for me, art is like, it's almost like sport. You practice, practice, practice to get better and better and better at it. But at the same time, you never decrease your ability. Physically, you don't seem to, to wear out like you would in sport. And then it's almost like science as well. You're experimenting constantly experimenting seeing what new methods work implementing new techniques uh, using different different chemicals you know you've got different mediums you can add to different things to see how what what happens what reaction you get like uh, when I first started illustrating I was very much in the mind that okay if it's an acrylic painting it's just acrylic I'm not using anything else. If it's um, gouache, just gouache. There's no other room for anything else. And then slowly over the years, I started to just realize, uh, you know, if, if I'm using acrylic ink, I can still use pencil. If I'm using uh, oil-based pencil, I can still use watercolor pencil. Because each one does it something different 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 things in different moments which is fantastic the the range of equipment we have as artists to use at our disposal is incredible especially with computer equipment Photoshop, you got your Photoshops, you got your Adobe's, you got your Illustrators. For a long time, I was doing uh, illustrations for a a company that um, required a, a process at the end that I I I didn't realize that was happening at their end. And then they said to me, "Oh, you know, would you like to have a go at it?" And it was in uh, Adobe Illustrator. And I gave it a shot and realized, oh, you know, I, I didn't realize this could, you could do this. And it just made, made it so much quicker. But then on the, the flip side is I work 
with pen and ink on paper. And I do it that way because one, I like it, but also it ends up being quicker for me to do what I do in pen and ink. And I enjoy the process. Someone once said to me, oh, why don't you automate something? What if you could, for a particular job I was doing, what if you automated it and you could make it so that a computer could do that? I was thinking, what's the point in that? I enjoy drawing. I enjoy the drawing side of things. I don't want, I don't want to automate it so that I can just sit back and, and not draw, because I like drawing. And the particular thing I was drawing, I like drawing. Any any project I've worked on, I tend to really like it. I really enjoy it. They've all been wonderful experiments. That's that's the way I look at most of the projects now. I think in the beginning when I did projects, I'd first work on a project, it was a it was a challenge to understand, okay, wh what am I doing here business wise? You know, how am I going to influence the the company I'm working for to think this guy's work is so good, let's get him for the next project. And that's what it was always about. And I think what I tended to do a lot was look at other artists who were working on something similar at the time and go, okay, how did they do it? This is what they did. I'm going to copy that. But nowadays... I don't really look at a lot of other artists' work. Two reasons. Uh, mostly looking at other artists' work, it's on Instagram or some sort of social media, and the, the pitfall is you get into a scroll hole and you just look forever and ever watching, watching Instagram. <laughs> and then I don't end up doing any work until late in the day or late at night. And then I miss out on doing the work I wanted to do because, you know, you've got a you've got family and friends that you want to spend time with. And now I've spent all that time I could have spent with them looking at Instagram. So I don't, I don't do that much anymore. Uh, if I do have a particular project that I think, oh, this reminds me of something I've seen before, I will look at, you know, that artist's work and think, yeah, yeah, I'll do, I'll do that, you know, to get influence, but I won't copy it or anything like that. I want to, I want to do something that's truly unique to what I do. Plus, I think I've developed my own style by now. I don't know what that style is, uh, but I like it. I like the process I work in. Uh, I try to make things look Someone once said to me, oh, your work looks very comic book-like. And I kind of took that badly because I was working in children's books at the time. But the truth was, I always wanted to work in comic books. So I thought, oh. Later on, I started to realise, oh, you know, that's kind of a, com a compliment if my work looks like comic books. Maybe I am working towards my goal of working in comics. Just didn't really get there. But I do make comics. So I kind of am happy with my style. It's not always perfect. It's always a keep practicing, keep learning. Like this like this picture. Just keep refining it down. I think um, what I'm doing is like a sculptor chipping away at the stone until the image is revealed because it's in there I've just got to chip away at it keep knocking bits back the bonus is unlike stone I can put bits back if I think I've taken something away too much like his ear there goes not so far out His head is probably a bit higher, but I'm not going to worry about the hair so much just yet. And the eyes. One eye leaves a bit more 
showing than the other. eyeballs. Someone always said to me, uh, I think I read it somewhere, or maybe someone said it, they work on the eyes first, because once they get the eyes done, it really captures the soul of the character, and then everything else works from there. And they, they did amazing portraits. They were, I think his name was Drew Blair, and it was at a time when I was heavily into airbrushing, and he, he did airbrushing, and he does amazing airbrush artwork. I should have a look, I should try and look him up again, because his work, wow, it was so photorealistic. Something I always strive for was photorealism, but then I realized I'm never going to get there. I'm not, I'm not a pho photorealistic artist. And as well, I started to think, um... Maybe I don't want to do photorealism, because you could take a picture with most things these days. Photorealism now, in especially in illustration, you can take photos of things, put them all together like a collage, and then you can create an, a stunning image as opposed to painting it. Whereas I, I kind of like the idea that it looks, my work looks a little bit more painterly. That was something else that someone once said. I, <laughs> that was someone who worked in comics said, oh, your work looks a bit too painterly. And I got offended by that. But then the work I really want to do is I want to do painted comics. That was my whole, whole goal. So I, I was kind of doing it already. It wasn't what people wanted, but I was doing what I wanted. So I kept... I kept going with that anyway, which I'm happy with. Be happy with your artwork as it is, but keep improving it. Because we're all very critical of our artwork. And artwork seems to be one of those, one of those things that doesn't work unless someone else criticizes it or looks at it. You know whether it's the artist or yourself. You know you don't do accountancy and then have someone look over it, your accounts and go, "It's beautiful," or "Oh, that makes me feel wonderful." No, it's, uh, artwork tends to get that. Architecture, artwork, creating things. I'm probably rambling a lot while I'm doing this, rather than explaining what it is that I'm doing. Okay, so this, I feel like the shape is there. The problem for me is, I can look at a picture for so long, that eventually I start to think, eh, it doesn't quite look like whatever it is that I'm drawing. I think I've reached that point. You know, it's just shapes. I'm not really sure if it looks like Robert Patterson. Maybe, maybe not. But this video has gone on for about half an hour now, and I think I think I don't want to bore anyone too much anymore with what I'm doing. So we're going to finish it off here. Anyway, it was just a quick demonstration to show you how I draw faces uh, and how quickly you can draw a portrait. It doesn't have to be spot on. Maybe I'll just put a little bit, a little bit of light there. It must have a narrower nose than I'm looking at. I think it. Whoop. Maybe the eyeballs as well. I could keep adjusting this though. Anyway, the, the technique that I was demonstrating was that how easy it is, even if you're not a really good portrait artist, which I am definitely not, I'm not good at doing portraits, uh, you can come up with a likeness for faces. And I had, I developed a, a technique that I've been working on for creating um, character faces from imagination 
which I've uh, I've made a Skillshare class. Uh, there'll be a link below, and you can check that out. Uh, with the link, you get a free uh, a free sign up for a month to Skillshare. You can check out all their classes. You can check out my class. I'd really appreciate it if you did check out the class uh, and left a review and even did some of the projects uh, or even just leave me a comment below and tell me what you think of this I really appreciate that any feedback would be wonderful because like I said artwork can't exist in a bubble um, whether you show it to your family and friends or the world it'd be nice to hear from everyone and hear what they think of your work I hope I hope you've enjoyed this session. I, I hope I haven't rambled too much. Um, and uh, even if you have been listening to this late at night and you've maybe drifted off and you're just coming back now, if I've bored you to sleep and it's night time, so be it. I've helped you sleep. That's that's okay. Or if, <laughs> if I feel like you feel like I haven't given you any insights into how to draw at all, Please make a comment and let me know, because I, I would like to help people draw better. I think I've, I've been drawing for a long time now, and um, something I've, I've wanted to do is have the have the chance to teach people how to draw too, because there's something very therapeutic about it. I always used to say that when I when I used to draw, because I would draw whilst on the telephone talking to people. I I draw any time of the day. I draw pretty much eight hours a day, I'd say, whether it's for work or just for myself. I can't help it. I've got to, I've got to come into the studio and do some sort of sketching. I'll draw with my daughter. My wife draws as well. We all draw. It, there's something so therapeutic about it, not even about having to create a masterpiece, but just at times just drawing something just for fun, even just shape sometimes. And I think, um, I think if you're looking for something very therapeutic even if you you know you don't need any therapy there's just something wonderful about just being able to draw and just relaxing with just a pencil and that's the other thing it doesn't require a lot of equipment you could use a tablet you could use photoshop and all those sorts of things but if you haven't got access to that you don't need that you could just have a pencil i've got like this pace, old pacer pencil that I've had to tape up at the end because it keeps falling apart. I've had this for about seven years, I think. You know, it's like a dollar fifty for the pencil, and then the leads. You can buy a pack of leads for however many dollars, and then uh, the paper I'm using is just photocopy photocopy paper that you buy a ream of for five dollars, hundred sheets or two hundred sheets for five dollars maybe, and uh, and away I go just just sketching and drawing and having a good time. Now I think it's no longer looking like Robert Patterson. It's probably looking like someone else. I'm just kind of fiddling with the with the sketch now. So I'm not even sure. It's probably got a more pointy nose. Maybe that's what's And this is this is Robert Patterson, uh, post post Twilight. This is this is probably a more recent picture. My wife and I watched all the Twilight movies the other day. It was it was the most entertaining uh, films I've ever seen. Um, it was it was. <laughs> It was very, very entertaining. Very entertaining indeed. All right. I have probably completely botched this now. I'm probably going way too far into... Into his... Uh, into the shading. But that's part of the fun. I can always go back, remove, remove bits if I want. Add more if I want to. What I probably should be doing is looking, looking at my reference more. Something I'm terrible at doing. 
I like to just wing it. Always been a sort of uh, loose, loose in that respect. No, no planning. It's uh, it's kind of my my thing. <laughs> just draw. <laughs> See what happens in the end. Well, in my mind, I've got I've got the layout or I've got the idea in my mind. But uh, when it comes to the execution, I kind of just enjoy going for it. And there we go. The eyebrow can go up a bit more. Like myself, he's got very very hairy eyebrows just to get a lot of shtick for my eyebrows and then now it's in now hairy eyebrows are in see everything comes around you just wait long enough and you think you're out of fashion eventually it all comes around it comes back into fashion Let's finish up now. Okay, I think I think it's it's not perfect. It's by no means close to the photo reference I'm looking at. In fact, the photo I'm looking at is slightly to the side, and I've made his face straight on. But you can see how you can get a likeness to whatever image it is you're looking at using this technique. And like I said, you can check out the technique at my Skillshare class. The link will be below. Uh, leave a comment on this video if you want to see something else or if you if you have a suggestion any comments uh, I'll, I'll be happy to look at them um, if you have any questions as well like if you want help with your art work let, let me know I'd, I'd love to hear what it is you have to say and thank you very much for sitting through and watching all 40 minutes of this drawing I really do appreciate it and uh, and I hope to do some more okay thank you bye bye